I advise them to send a viral video. I said, man, send it viral because, based on what they said and what I knew in my heart, the entire nation and the entire world need to know that it wasn't alcohol poison. So I told him to send, even though she was naked and they were hitting on her. I know they took over there, and I'm envious and premeditated over it right now. We are told that the KV-06 were most definitely involved in Shankella's death by new, more convincing evidence almost every day. In addition, in the modern era, the so-called friends of the deceased woman were exposed when a new, clearer recording of their atrocities against her was made public on the internet. And let's just say that almost everything that has been revealed in the past prior to this has not implicated them in the same manner that this has. This suggests that the authorities may decide to close the deal with them at this point. This new development is also exciting because it clarifies a lot more of what we already know about the things the Cabo 6 did to her while they were in Mexico. So, by the end of this video, you should probably be pretty convinced that I can convince you. So, stay tuned until the end and let's see how it turns out. Numerous new details regarding the Shankwella Robinson case have surfaced in recent days. In addition, Robinson's friends have once again found themselves at the forefront of the case, despite the fact that the majority of them have been primarily concerned with diverting attention away from the Cabo Six. For the new update, another recording has quite recently advanced toward the web, and it very well could be what shuts the whole case. A new and clearer account of Shankwella's friend's attacks on her has recently appeared on the internet, according to reports. Additionally, it appears abundantly clear that these individuals may have actually planned this attack from the beginning. Cooler, can you at least respond? A minimum of something, at least try to fight back. Rome, rise, get up. You could hear different people talking on the recording, the first of whom was identified as Ginny Jackson, who is also one of the most important suspects in the case. In the background, you can also hear a few men talking about how she couldn't respond. Even though the whole thing may appear to be a straightforward narrative here, the actual situation was somewhat more complicated than appears. Shankwella Robinson died according to reports, while traveling with a few of her friends to Mexico to celebrate one of their birthdays. The investigation has also demonstrated that her friends claim that her death was accidental and not even physical is incorrect. In addition, it has revealed that they appear to have planned her death from the beginning, and the fight essentially demonstrates that. However, the fact that her friends actually refused to transport her to the hospital when it became clear that she was in critical condition, makes the story as a whole even more compelling. Even worse, an on-site physician actually advised that they transport her to the hospital. A doctor from a local hospital in Cabo, Mexico, was with Robinson and other housemates for nearly three hours before she was pronounced dead, according to excerpts from a police report that were obtained by news outlets. A Mexican news publication's investigative reporter provided the Charlotte Observer with a portion of the police report on October 29. According to the report, on October 29, at 2.13 p.m., medical personnel were summoned to the villa in San Jose del Cabo, where Robinson and her party were staying. Robinson was assisted by Dr. Gutierrez from the American Medical Center, a nearby hospital, an hour later. Others at the house then informed Gutierrez that Robinson had consumed a lot of alcohol. Robinson would then receive an IV from him. The report continues by stating that Gutierrez discovered Robinson, a female with stable vital signs, dehydration, verbal incapacity, and an appearance of intoxication. Robinson's friends insisted that she be treated at the villa, but Gutierrez informed the other housemates that he believed Robinson needed to be transferred to a hospital. After that, Dr. Gutierrez made an unsuccessful attempt to administer Robinson's IV. The police report says so. Robinson began to experience seizures about an hour into Gutierrez's house visit. One of the housemates called 911 shortly thereafter. 
Shakeweller Robinson was having trouble staying alive at this point. She was having trouble breathing and had a lower pulse. At 4.49 p.m., Robinson had stopped having a pulse, according to Gutierrez. According to the report, they promptly began performing CPR on her. At 5.25 p.m., the police arrived, and the paramedics attempted 14 rounds of cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, five doses of adrenaline, and six discharges, but were unsuccessful. At 5.57 p.m., Shankwella Robinson passed away, based on the report. It is important to note that the report made no mention of Robinson's physical injuries. Robinson died from severe spinal cord injury and atlas flexation, according to a Mexican autopsy report, which has left her family in the dark. However, prior to all of these details being made public, a social media video of Robinson fighting another woman in what appeared to be a hotel room circulated. Robinson, the woman in the video, is not seen defending herself in a one-sided fight. Before receiving additional blows, the brief video captures Robinson being punched in the head, thrown in the face multiple times, and thrown to the ground. The Robinson family's emotions are pretty high right now as they wait to learn more about the circumstances surrounding the baffling death of the 25-year-old. In her hometown of Charlotte, North Carolina, on December 10, a rally for the young former Winston-Salem State University student was held. Robinson's family and hundreds of supporters poured into the Little Rock Ames Zion Church to demand that the suspect in Shankwell's tragic death be apprehended. During his speech, Braxton Winston, the pro-TEM mayor of Charlotte, stated, I'm going to be honest, this is tough, this is hard. How many words of comfort can you offer in this circumstance? He assured the Robinson family, I assure you this community will not forget you, as he informed them that there was so much grief in our community. During the rally, the relatives of Shankwell did not speak. They did, however, speak out shortly after. However, her sister was the one who was very particular about whether or not her friends were involved in the events that transpired. The last time Tequila Long saw her sister, Shankwella Robinson, according to reports, was when Robinson visited her home on October 27, 2022. The following day, Robinson was going on a trip with friends to San Jose del Cabo, a popular tourist destination south of Baya in California Sur, Mexico. She actually came to steal a piece of my luggage for the trip, for a long time with Essence. I didn't feel bad about her going out of town, because I thought she was going with the same people she always traveled with. I only advise her to remain safe. Long found out shortly after that her sister had passed away while traveling. Stories were contradictory. She had long been aware that there had been a fight, but she believed a different account from a male friend that Robinson had passed away from alcohol poisoning.